One of the recent interests I've developed um, at the Sustainable House is to do with energy production and in particular uh, methane production by use of a biodigester. I'm currently in the process of building um, a small biodigester. For those of you who don't understand um, biodigestion, basically the process is, is that organic matter is fed into a container and that container is in an anaerobic state, so it's devoid of oxygen. And in the container, bacteria, anaerobic bacteria, convert the, um, the organic matter into methane. And the amount of methane produced from different sources varies, and there's lots of information on this on the web, but um, often you can use manures, so things like cow manure, um, which makes uh, gobar gas, which is referred to as gobar gas in India. Um, cow manure will produce roughly 20,000 litres of biogas, which will be around the 60% methane mark, um, and the rest of it is carbon dioxide with a touch of hydrogen sulphide out of about a metric tonne of, of manure. Now that sounds doesn't sound like a, a hell of a yield, but you've got to remember that this um, the manure has been pre-digested of sorts, so a lot of that energy has already gone. If, however, you were to put some of the raw materials in there, like um, grass, if you could, you know, macerate the grass and give that to the to the um, bacteria instead of the manure, so the the forerunner for the cow, then they actually produce um, close to I think it's somewhere in the vicinity of about 300 or 400,000 liters per um, ton of grass. So significantly increase the production. Um, this little generator here that I've developed. This is a, um, a model, a um, very simple model that, I, that I've developed to test the, pro the process. I actually intend to feed in here, and it'll feed in through this pipe here. I intend to feed in here um, uh, one kilo of manure and one kilo of vegetable oil every day. Because um, vegetable oil will produce in the vicinity of about... Um, a million litres per metric tonne. So by putting in a, a litre of um, manure and a litre of uh, vegetable oil, oil in this every day, I should be able to produce in the vicinity of about 900 litres of gas per day. Um, and then what will happen is the, the um, feedstocks come in through here and they will go down. They go down in through this pipe there's actually a pipe that goes down to the very bottom of, of, the, of the tank and then it fills up inside there up to about this level as a liquid level um, there's actually another pipe inside that's run on an angle and then runs out here and down into this tub now this tub is going to be the outflow of the effluent from the digester and that um, piece there is, is, is kept really long so that it'll always be below the level of the sludge. So when I empty this, scooping out the sludge to use in the garden, because it's an excellent fertiliser, quite high in nitrogen, I need to be sure to keep the level, um, you can know, keep that keep that 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 um, end under the level of the sludge, so that it prevents oxygen coming back in and getting into into the mix here. Now the gas was produced inside the container by the bacteria. It rises up and will sit in the top here and it will be bled off through this so it will bleed out through here and then this will then flow over to a storage vessel I actually had originally had intended to use um, that as a storage vessel upside down inside of a, um, a 44 gallon drum with water and because it's upside down and the water isn't it as it will rise as the gas fills and it will the water will contain the gas unfortunately though that drum is a little bit too big for the 44 gallon drum so that didn't work so I've got to come up with another solution for storage of the gas. But as you can see, it's a rather simple affair. Um, the next steps I need to do, and the reason I'm doing this video now is because very soon you won't be able to see any of this sort of stuff, is I'm actually going to use some aluminium tape, um, some metal tape, to attach this to the outside of the drum. This is a, um, a heating element, um, and that'll wrap around the outside of the drum. I'm then going to put some insulation around the drum. Now, you know, you could do this really in a really snazzy manner by building a box and, and putting the insulation inside that. In this case, it is just a trial, and I don't want to um, to spend too much money on the trial because obviously, if it doesn't quite work as expected, I might have to dismantle it and, and, and rebuild this. So, um, I'm, my intention is just to wrap it in some um, pink bats and then wrap those in some plastic or something um, so that way it'll it'll still be insulated it won't be quite as good as if it was done in um, in a more permanent fashion but for a trial it will work just fine
The concept of the heat tape is this process happens much faster at a higher temperature. So um, there are two types of bacteria that, that uh, are used in biodigestion. Digestion. They're mesophilic and thermophilic bacteria. The thermophilic bacteria, as the name suggests, they like really warm temperatures. So they will actually um, they actually work best at about the 60 degree centigrade mark. But that's a really high temperature, and, and you need to expend a lot of energy to keep um, this tub at that, high, at that temperature. So I'm actually going to use the mesophilic bacteria, which work best between 30 and 40 degrees centigrade. So by wrapping this around there and insulating it, I will hopefully be able to keep the internals about that about that uh, temperature. The two other things that I still need to do once that's done and it's collected, obviously apart from the gas collection um, point, is on the bottom of this uh, drum. And if I just sort of roll it back here, well, I'll just roll it right, roll it right back, and make a bit of noise as it falls down. There we are. Okay, so on the bottom, whoops, on the bottom you'll see that I've put a a, um, a hole in in the lid or what's the base now, and that will actually have a little stand built, and I'll have a little outlet coming out, and on that I'm going to put a small um, macerating pump, so a pump that's used for um, pumping sewage, and what it'll do is it'll draw the um, the fluids out. I'm hoping it'll it'll chop it all up, and then it'll push it back out and back in through the inlet so the idea is being is I want to encourage some circulation inside here so that I don't get uh, sediment layers forming inside here basically the sludge is always in a sort of semi fluid state also allow good mixing to allow the bacteria to get to everything that's inside there the other thing I need to do is I've got another macerating pump and that will actually be put on my inlet so if I just stand this up and just give me a second to stand this fellow up there we are busy making a mess of everything all right um, so basically if I um, I want to put another macerating pump and it'll sit up here somewhere and I'll basically have a bucket here with a pump attached to it and then a tube flowing into here so the manure and the oil each day will get put into the bucket the macerating pump which is a little 12 volt pump doesn't use a hell of a lot of amps but it'll only be run for a very short time will be turned on it will chew up all of the manure and turn it into a something that's pumpable, so like a sludgy type thing, and then push it into the digester. So hopefully uh, with those two macerating pumps, this one down the bottom here will turn on for maybe 15 minutes twice a day, um, and this one will only run for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes as it's being filled every day. So shouldn't use a hell of a lot of energy. Um, obviously our, our heat source, which is all tangled now, but our heat source will use some energy as well. But what we'll do is we'll actually uh, measure the output of gas and we'll measure the input of energies so that we can um, get some idea of how much energy was consumed by the system and how much energy the system has actually provided. Um, the plan for the feedstock is because uh, the manure is readily available and eventually when uh, the sustainable house sets up its dairy we'll have lots of manure available from the cows at that point and the oil increases the um, the production of gas quite significantly. So the plan longer term is if this works to scale this up to a much larger system um, it will be taking in the vicinity of 20 to 30 kilos of manure a day and probably in the vicinity of about 5 litres of used cooking oil. So this is a waste resource from local restaurants and things that can be purchased quite cheaply. It'll be run through this system um, the gas will then be bled off into a storage vessel and attached to the storage vessel will be a small generator and the generator will produce um, electricity and the heat, the generator will be water cooled, the heat from the generator will be used to heat the tank as well as do a couple of other heating tasks. So ultimately this is something that could potentially um, provide a, a significant uh, improvement on energy usage as well as utilizing some waste products from the property and some waste products from um, some of my neighbors so um, it has a lot of potential and I guess time will tell to see whether or not the potential um, whether the, the whether the potential shows itself to be true or whether or not um, this idea gets scrapped but it's part of the fun of, of testing these things well anyway I will um, revisit on the blog periodically how this project is coming and we'll see how things progress